This is the 2022 Kia Sportage, and a few things that are special about the one in behind me. It's the LX Night Sky version in Canada, which is also the Night Fall Edition down in the US. So lots of exciting things. It's more or less a blackout package for the Sportage, and this thing looks very, very sharp. Steve here, Cars with Steve, and before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out and a thank you to Durham Kia for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you today. Check down in the description below for their contact details. Now, this video is going to go over everything you need to know about the Sportage, talking about all the different trim level choices, wheel options, cargo dimensions, how that media screen works, and everything in between. If you're looking for a shorter walk around video, check down in the description below. And on top of that, Durham Kia, you definitely want to check out their website. They've got great inventory, but on top of that, they've got a pretty interesting 360 view, so you could dive in deep to all of their different vehicles as well. It's kind of neat. But guys, let's have a little bit of fun, dive into it, and figure out what the 2020 to Sportage has to offer. Now, starting off with some exterior styling. So the night sky version of the vehicle, I think looks absolutely beautiful. So like I said, it's like a blackout package for the vehicle. So when it comes into the actual tire itself, we're either looking at 17, 18, or 19 inch, depending on which trim level of the vehicle we're looking at. This specific one, so when we look at the night sky, nightfall, etc., it's going to be an 18 inch tire with this beautiful black rim instead. So when it comes down to it, great look. Now, moving forward into the actual headlamps themselves. So they're going to be halogen in the lower trim levels we have the option for the LEDs instead in the higher trim levels and that's going to be the same thing with our fog lamps as well might just be a standard might be an LED depending on which trim level you go for but great look when it comes down to it all right now taking a peek underneath the hood of the Sportage so we also have the option for the 2 liter turbocharged engine instead from a power perspective, this 2.4 liter engine is gonna be able to push at 181 horsepower and 175 pound-feet of torque. If you look at the two liter turbocharge engine though, that's where things get a little bit of an upgrade. Power-wise in that turbocharge, you're gonna be able to push at 240 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. So plenty of power when it comes down to it. Now taking a peek underneath the hood itself, very straightforward, we've got easy access if we need to top up some fluids, we can easily check our oil, and then we've got very easy access to the battery as well. Taking a peek at the key fob of the vehicle. So as you can see there, we've got our Kia logo along the bottom. We can access our key easily by pressing that button. Moving to the front of the fob, we've got our lock button, our unlock button, our trunk release, as well as our horn or a panic alarm button. Now one thing to note, some versions of the vehicle, you may have remote start, some of them not. So we will be able to have those UVO services in the highest trim level of the vehicle, which means we can remote start directly through our cell phone, which I think is great. Now, in order to be able to get into the trunk of the vehicle, so along the very bottom, as you can see there, we do have our hold button. So we can press and hold in order to be able to unlock the tailgate. Now, one other thing to point out, so underneath the T in Sportage, if we go down, there's a little handle there. So we're gonna grab that handle and that's gonna unlock and we can just lift this thing up. So we do just have a regular lift gate inside of this thing. Inside of some trim levels of the vehicle, you might have a power one and that's going to be a smart lift gate as well, which means that we can approach the back and it's going to automatically raise the lift gate for us. This specific one doesn't have that option, but have a peek at the cargo dimensions. All right, so cargo dimensions for the vehicle are going to be showing up. So as you can see there, we have a good amount of width and depth to the vehicle when it comes down to it. And we are a 60-40 split, so 40% driver, 60% passenger, so we can fold down one seat or the other if we want to. All right, now take a look at the difference when we have that second row folded down. And one of the nice things is that this thing actually does fold fairly flat, which I'm pretty surprised about. So fairly flat fold, which is a nice thing. Now there are a few different measurements that are showing up. So the first measurement is going to be from the very bottom to the actual top of the loading area. The second measurement is going to be from a little bit further in to get us to the very top of the roof. Now there are two different measurements because if you've got a larger box, you're not going to be able to shove a larger box because we've got a couple extra inches past this lip. You're not going to be able to shove a box in that's that height. But if you're stacking boxes, things like that, you get a little, little bit creative. You could absolutely fit things that are a teeny little bit bigger. Now, as we start to hop inside of the vehicle, so a few things to point out there. So along our left side, not much to write home about. So we do have a little hook along both the driver and the passenger side there. And as you can see, we do have the option for a cargo shade. So a privacy shade, we can easily install that if we wanted to. Moving down, this is going to be the standard cover for the back. We do have the option for a thermoplastic rubber tray. We could look at WeatherTech as an option there instead. But as we start to crank this thing up, as you can see, we've got a little storage area. Moving it up a little bit more, we also do have our tire mobility kit. So the same thing, certain trim levels of the vehicle will have a mini size spare. Most of them will have this tire mobility kit though, but we do have a little bit of storage space in the back there as well. And one of the nice things is that this whole cover, we can literally just crank this whole thing out in order to slide it out. So if we need a little bit more space, we can easily do that. 
All right, taking a peek at some standard technology. So at a minimum, we will have our backup camera. That's going to be standard across the entire vehicle lineup. Certain trim levels of the vehicle, we will also have the reverse sensing system. The night sky version doesn't have that as an option, but it is available in some of the higher trims. We will at least have heated mirrors, and that's going to be standard across the entire vehicle lineup as well. We also do have our blind spot system. So our blind spot system lets us know if anybody's under the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. When it comes down to filling up fuel inside of the vehicle, very straightforward, just along our driver's side, we've got a little cutout there, and it is a cap system, so lockable, which is nice. So click that in order to lock it back into place. Now, when it comes down to the fuel quality, just regular 87 gas, so 87 octane is all you need to use inside of this vehicle. And that's gonna be the same whether you're looking at the 2.4 liter or the two liter turbocharged engine if you're down in the States. Now, having said that, it's an 87 octane, but if we look at the horsepower and the torque specs, that's typically achieved using a higher quality fuel. Do you need to use one? No, but you will notice a little bit of a difference in performance if you use a higher octane. All right. Now taking a peek at second row spacing. So I'm six feet tall, driver's seat setup for somebody is six feet tall, and I still have a nice amount of knee room, good amount of foot space, and up overhead, like I'm surprised, like I've got like three inches of head space up overhead as well. So if you've got some taller people, knowing they'll definitely be able to fit back here. Now one other thing to note, the seats, you can actually recline them a little bit too, which is kind of nice. So there's a lever by our left side on the driver, right side of the passenger, moving backwards like that like it's like four and a half inches of headspace so if you've got some taller people they'll definitely be able to get inside of this thing now on the back of the driver passenger side we do have some pockets there as well so if we need to store some things we can absolutely do that we've got our handle up overhead and we've also got a little hook there too as we move into the back, so we do have cup holders and that's going to be standard across the entire vehicle lineup. So we've got two cup holders there, click it, log it back into place as we move forward. So as you can see there, we've got our basics for our actual fan control. And then we also do have a 12 volt power point. So 180 watt power point in the back there. Now, when we get into certain trim levels, it's actually the SX premium. So the highest trim level available, we're going to have heated second row seats. With those second row seats, we would have buttons in the back and it's just going to be the outboard seats that'll be heated. So that driver passenger side, this middle seat is never going to be heated. All right, now as we hop inside the vehicle, so driver's side doors, as you can see, we've got our basics for our window control so we can control our side view mirrors. We've also got our auto folding for our side view mirrors there as well. Down a little bit more, we've got our basics for our window control. We do have a little bit of storage space there. Driver passenger side, we've got some room for a bottle there if we'd like to. And then just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel. So we can increase or decrease the brightness of the instrument cluster. Now adjusting the driver passenger seat inside of the vehicle might be a manual process, might be a power process, depending on which trim level of the vehicle you're looking at. Now inside of the nightfall version or the night sky version of the vehicle, manual process for the driver and the passenger seat. So in between our legs, we've got a lever there. We can crank that up to slide the seat forwards and backwards. We've got one on the side and that's going to raise the seat up and we can also lower it down. We've got one for our backrest as well. So we can bring that backwards or forwards to our liking. Now, one thing to note with the seat all the way down, all the way back as well, up overhead, I've got like three, no, like four and a half, almost five inches of headspace up overhead. So if you've got some people that are a little bit taller, they will absolutely be able to fit inside of this vehicle. Now, one thing to note, this one doesn't have the sunroof. So when we look at one with the roof, definitely something to think about because we lose about an inch, inch and a half roughly of headspace up overhead with that roof, but nice look when it comes down to it. Now, adjusting the steering wheel inside of the vehicle lineup is going to be a manual process as well. So by our left knee, we've got a little lever there. We're just gonna crank that down and it's a telescopic wheel so we can go in and out, up and down. And we're just gonna take that, click it, lock it back into place. Next up, taking a peek at the steering wheel of the vehicle. So lots of things to cover off here, but one of the first things to point out is that the steering wheel itself might be heated, might not be, depending on which trim level we look at. As we start to move down, we do have our voice command prompt, and that's going to be for activating our Siri Assistant or our Google Assistant if we're connected through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. We've got our mode button that's going to change us between AM, FM, and other active sources. We can answer or hang up on a phone call. We've got our voice for our volume rocker. Now we can also change between active presets by moving up and down this way. We can also press and hold in order to be able to seek. So if we want to seek out a certain station, we can do that this way as well. So very, very straightforward there. Moving along the opposite side. So this specific vehicle has just regular cruise control. We do have the option for that smart cruise. So the adaptive cruise control system instead, again, depending on the trim level of the vehicle that we're in. So we can set, increase, decrease, etc., And then we can also move up and down between each page of that cluster screen. So as you can see there, we've got our fuel economy, accumulated info, drive info, as well as our current speed. And we do have the option of going between kilometers per hour or miles per hour, just by pressing the okay button there. So we're gonna hold and miles hold and kilometers, so it's really that simple. 
we do have the page button there, which is going to let us change between different things. So as you can see, we do have our tire pressure and we can press again in order to move between our settings. So we've got our driver assistant settings. So if we look there, we do have our cross traffic alert and the blind spot system. So as I mentioned, blind spot system lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. And that's going to highlight orange on both side view mirrors there. And we can also move back from there. So let's go back and look at our door settings. So door, we've got our automatic lock. We've got our auto unlock, our two press unlock, our horn feedback, which is an interesting one because if we don't have all of the doors shut properly and we go to lock it, it's gonna give us a chirp and let us know that we haven't shut all the doors properly. Back again, we've got some basics for our lights or one touch turn signal. So we've got our turn signal there. So we press that. We've got our three flashes, five, etc. Now this is actually a really cool system because let's say if we had our light, our turn signal. So we've got three flashes there versus we go for five. Versus we go off it's just going to flip once. So we've got a lot of flexibility and I love this fact that Kia vehicles have this feature. It's such a simple one, but such a neat one at the same time. And then we've got our headlight delay there as well. Moving into our sound, we've got our welcome sound. So as we turn the vehicle on, on or off, down a bit more, we've got some convenience settings. So we've got our wiper light display, our auto rear wiper. So that's a really good one to have on because if your front wipers are going and we put the car into reverse, the rear wiper is automatically going to turn on as well. And we've got our gear position warning as well, and then our icy road warning. So a lot of safety features when it comes down to it. We've got our service intervals, so we can enable our service interval as well, so the vehicle will remind us when we need to go in for service. And we've got our other, so we've got our fuel economy reset, our different speed units, fuel economy, tire pressure, temperature, things like that. Moving back again, we can reset everything to bring it back to our factory default settings. Next up, we've also got our traction control settings. So we can turn our traction control off or on or off if we want to. We've got a few different options there. And moving back again into our main page. Now, as we start to move up, so we do have our light control along our left turning stick, pull in towards us for our high beams, and we can push away to lock in if we're in certain settings. So we have to be out of the auto setting in order for our high beams to be locked out. So one thing to think about there. Moving along the right side, we can also control what's going on with our front wipers there very simply. We can go between high or low. And then if we move this stick, so along the very right side, that's going to turn on our rear wiper as well. All right, next up, let's take a peek at the media screen of the vehicle. So this media screen is going to be the standard size. So it's an eight inch media screen. It's going to be standard across the entire vehicle lineup. When we get into the SX, so the highest trim level available, that's going to also include factory navigation. But this specific one does not have factory navigation. We are just looking at Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in order to connect, in order to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, things like that. We can click on the home icon there in order to bring us back to this basic home screen. We can figure out what's going on with our audio. So what station are we currently tuned to? If we were connected to Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, that would show up. We've got our menu, my menu apps and setup. So we've got a lot of different options here. Let's go through each one as we go. So moving in, so we've got our FM, so our AM, FM, so we've got our radio selection there. As you can see, we've got our series of different presets. So in order to save a preset, all we're going to do is tune to whatever station we want to. We're just going to press and hold. And as you can see, the station is now saved. It really is that simple. I love how simple that is. We can easily what select whatever station we want to there as well. We can click on our band to go AM, FM. We can look at our info if we want to have the info of what's showing. And then we can also scan by pressing that button. Moving along the very top, we've got our station list. We can, we can delete presets if we wanted to go that route. Press our back button there again. Back into our menu screen again, we've got our basic sound settings. And I say basic, but there are a lot of options when it comes down to it. So we can adjust what's going on with our actual balance. We've got our volumes. So we've got our system sound, phone projection as well. The beeping that we're getting here, if that drives you nuts, we can disable it. So we disable that, we don't get the beeping anymore. So whether you have that one on or not is gonna be a matter of preference. We've got a series of different system sounds as well. So as our ringtone comes in and then our voice, com uh, voice command prompts. Moving back, we've got our tone, so we can change our trouble mid-range bass. We've got our priority as well, so startup volume limit, proximity warnings, and then some advanced ones. So speed dependent volume. So if the vehicle is going faster, it's going to turn the, speed of the volume up for us. And then we've got our default, so we can bring everything back to our factory defaults instead. So if you've played around with the settings too much, we can just default that if we want to. And that's going to be the basics of the radio. Moving back, as you can see, we can now move into our all menu. We've got our phone now. So we've got a few different ways we can hit the phone. So we can go phone in there if we were connected. We jump into all menu and we go into our phone. Turn Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. So setting up your device, 
Select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. <laughs> All right, so very straightforward there. What we want to do is after we hit that button, we're just going to go into our phone. So we're going to start off on the iPhone side of things first. So literally all you're going to do on your phone, make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on. And as you can see, Kia Motors. So we're just looking for the vehicle name. We're just going to select in the vehicle name. Okay, we want to make sure that these numbers match up, which they do. So we're going to hit pair. There we go. Allow my favorites and contacts to sync. Yes, we're going to allow that. The phone is now connected. It really is that simple. So we click into the phone now. And as you can see, we've got my downloads there. So we've got all my previous uh, my previously made numbers. We've got my dial pad. We've got my contact book and then my favorite list there as well. So we are fully connected. If we jump back into the home screen again, as you can see, we've got my phone and we've also got my Bluetooth audio. So that's really, really nice because we can select between different audio sources with our phone being one of them. And that's the basics of actually setting up the phone. But one of the nice things is that we do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So setting up Apple CarPlay, very straightforward. All we're going to do is take our USB cable and we're going to plug it into that that front USB port. Well, step one is done. Step number two, we're just going to take that USB cable, we're going to take our phone, and we're just going to literally plug this thing in. Now watch this. Okay, activate Siri in the phone settings. So yes, we want to make sure we do that. So we're going to hit OK. And do we want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we want to make sure we do that. And it should take a second and we are connected. We launch into CarPlay. Look at this. We've got my messages. We've got my Apple Maps. We've got Google Maps. We've got Waze. And we can use these things directly through this screen. So that's why I'm saying like if your phone doesn't, if, sorry, if your vehicle doesn't have factory navigation, don't worry about it because we still do have flexibility of connecting this way instead. And one of the cool things is whether we're connected through Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, etc., we can still use our radio. So we can still rely on the radio instead of using our phone. But one of the cool things, we've got LiveX Live, which is a radio app. Pandora, things like that will work through this middle screen as well. So that's a pretty cool thing. Now, if we want to get out of this, we could disconnect the phone if we wanted to, or we just press the Kia button there. So we can jump back in easily by pressing Apple CarPlay. And one of the cool things about CarPlay is that we've got some flexibility because if we go into our general phone settings, we go into CarPlay, we can select Kia, and we can customize this. So if you have a tendency, I'll maybe listen to podcasts a little bit more. Maybe you love your audiobooks. We can drag and drop to whatever your own personal preferences are. If you've removed one too many things, on the very bottom, they will show up there. Or we can just do a reset in order to reset it back to our factory default instead. So really, really cool, really cool that we've got that option. All right, you know, if we ever want to disable CarPlay, so one thing we have to do first is actually physically unplug from the vehicle. We just go to setup for a second, and we've got our phone projection now, and we can disable or enable Apple CarPlay. So if we disable it, it's now disabled. And if we plug in, and one of the nice things there is that if you want to still be charged up and not use CarPlay, we can able, easily enable or disable it from there if we wanted to. So Bluetooth audio is disabled technically on this thing, but if we jump back, to our home screen there, we've got my phone as well. So we click on phone, and as you can see there, we do have my phone settings there. We can jump inside, and we can, we've, we're back to our dial pad. So it really is that simple. Right now, connecting an Android device is literally the exact same process. So I still do have the iPhone connected because if we go into Bluetooth, so you can see we have a series of different settings there, but we go into our Bluetooth connection. And as you can see, my iPhone is still connected. We can delete the devices or we can add a new one. So what we're gonna do is hit add new, and then on your, Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. <laughs> so literally about to say that. Select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. So we just want to connect Kia Motors. Okay. Same thing. We want to make sure that the numbers pair up and they do. So we're going to hit that. And here we go. So Galaxy has been connected. And we want to set it, so set it as a priority phone. So if you have multiple phones connected, your priority phone is the one that's going to connect first. So there we go. As you can see there, it is now connected. So if we go back to the home screen now, we jump back into the phone, and it's asking, do I want to allow access to contacts? Yes, we want to do that. And it's downloading the contacts there as well. So we dial back in. We've got my dial pad there. We've got my contact list and favorites. And it really is that simple connecting the device. Right now, very similar to the iPhone side of things, we do have the option of connecting to Android Auto. So we, all we have to do is take our USB cable and we're going to plug it into the available USB port in front of us there. Opposite end of the cable, we're going to plug in and we're going to wait. Okay, it's available. So we just have to wait for it to show up on the car. Go back home and Android Auto. 
Wahaha. <laughs> Look at this. So as you can see there, I am connected. We hop inside. We've got our basics for settings. We've got the hotkey for our map. We've got our notification center as well as our Google Assistant. We press the button in the middle there, and as you can see, we've got podcast, map, phone, messages, and a number of other things. Right now, very similar to the iPhone side of things, if we want to change around the actual look of this, all we're going to do on our phone is select Android Auto and search for Android Auto, I should say, and we're going to go to the Android Auto settings. We jump into our settings. We've got the currently connected car. We can generalize the launcher, or we can customize the launcher, I should say. So if you have a preference, oh, I don't know, maybe you'd rather have your... Let's go reminders on the top instead, podcast down below, etc. We can move these things around, but one thing to note, we do have to restart Android Auto in order for these things to change. So it's not a dynamic press the same way that iPhone was, but we still do have the flexibility to change it around. We can go day night mode for maps. We've got our Google dictation, Google assistant, and a number of other things. Now we do have that option of pressing the steering wheel button. So as you can see, we've got the Google assistant. That's going to work the same way for Siri as well. So we can press that button on the steering wheel in order to get both our Google and our Siri assistant. And then very straightforward. We want to get back to that Kia home screen. We press the key button there. As you can see, we're back into the home screen again. We go into our setups, phone projection. So this is one thing to think of. If we want to make any changes, disconnect Android Auto, we do have to physically disconnect from the device first. We go phone projection and we can disable car, we can disable Android Auto and Apple CarPlay if we wanted to. So we can disable either one. And that's one of the cool things because we can still charge the phone up without having to worry about being connected to Android Auto. So we've got a little bit of flexibility when it comes down to it. Now, one thing to note, as I mentioned, certain vehicles, certain trim levels of the vehicle will have a wireless charging pad that's going to be the highest trim level that's available. And otherwise, we are going to be a regular USB connection in order to charge this thing up. And that's how we connect a phone to the vehicle. If we want to delete, all we're going to do is go set up and we've got our phone or we, we're projection manager or our phone settings. We go to our Bluetooth. We've got both connected devices. We can delete devices simply by, by selecting them. One and two. We're going to go both and we're just going to go delete. Yes. And as you can see there, fully deleted, and it really is that simple collect, connecting and deleting a phone from the vehicle. All right, now moving back to our home screen again, jump into our all menus, and we've got a number of other things. So we look at our quick guide, and that's going to give us some basics of how some of these things work. Moving back, oh, we could have pressed the back button there. So we've got back, and we can jump into our radio there again, back again. If we had other music connected, we could do that. And we've also got our basic setup. So setup, we've got a lot of options there. So sound, we've already been through this sound one. Moving into our media, so same thing, we've got our basics for our media notification center. Our display, so we've got a few different modes there. So the vehicle itself is currently in the automatic mode, so it can switch us up between the daytime or the nighttime mode, just depending on how bright it is outside. Automatic means that the vehicle is automatically going to adjust it for us. Illumination, we can change the actual cluster screen there, and we've also got our default settings, so we can bring everything back to our factory defaults again. Moving into our Bluetooth, so same thing, we've got a series of different Bluetooth settings there. We've got our Bluetooth prompts, our Bluetooth system info, and a number of other things. Moving back, projection, phone projection is where we go in, either, in order to either enable or disable CarPlay. Looking at our home screen, so we can play around with what's showing on the home screen itself. Our date and time, so we can change minute, year, hour, etc. 12, 12 and 24 hour mode, so if you prefer that military time, we can do it. And we've also got daylight savings time as well, so the vehicle will take daylight savings time into account. We've also got our languages, so we can change between either English, French, Spanish, or Korean. Moving back again, next page, we've got our keyboard. So we've got the keyboard type, so either QWERTY keyboard or defaults. And we've got our screensaver there. So we've got a few different options. So as nice and as big and beautiful as that screen is, if we find it a little bit too much, we've got some different options there. So when the screen is turned off, it's actually nothing's going to be displayed. Or do we want an analog or a digital clock instead? Moving back, we've got our advanced mode. So advanced mode, few other things. So we've got the, our advanced button. So we've got an individual button there that can go for phone protection, Bluetooth audio, things like that. And then we've got our steering wheel mode button. So as we press the mode button on the steering wheel, what's it going to sell, select between? So we've got our AM, FM, USB music. We've got our iPod, phone projection, things like that. So a lot of flexibility when it comes down to it. And then we've got our basic for our system info. So we've got our storage, defaults, etc. And then we can also do a software update. And that's going to be the basics of this media screen. Because if we go through our My Menu, same thing. So we can add, and if we want to create our own custom menu, so we go to My Menu, we can look at our radio presets and different shortcuts, apps and info. We've got our quick guide for that, and then our basic setup as well. As we start to move down, we've got some basics for our audio settings. So we do have a few different options. We can tune, there's a rocker there. We can also use that rocker on the steering wheel in order to be able to tune that way if we wanted to. 
Moving down a little bit more, we've got basics for our climate control. We've got our basics for our front or rear window defroster. And then we've also got heated seats. Now the heated seats, that's a nice thing because that's going to be standard in this vehicle regardless. Doesn't matter which trim level of the vehicle you're looking at. When it comes down to the higher trim levels, we actually will get ventilated seats in this. So we've got a cooled seat, which is really, really nice. Now, speaking of seats, looking at the actual seat quality, some of them are going to be cloth, some of them are going to be synthetic leather, and some of them are going to be actual leather. So which one you get is going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle you look at. But like I said, regardless, like this base cloth seat is surprisingly comfortable in that headrest. It's like there's a cushion in the headrest. It is so comfortable. I, I absolutely love it. Uh, moving down a tiny bit more, we have a 12 volt power, well, two 12 volt power points, I should say, as well as a USB port. We've got our gear shifter, park reverse neutral drive, and then we've also got a manual mode as well. So we've got the option of flipping out gears if we want to do it that way instead, if you have that preference. So the vehicle's automatically going to switch. It's an automatic transmission. So it's going to depend on if you like to have that feeling of that manual control or not. Moving down a little bit more, we've got a series of different drive modes. So our normal mode, eco, sport as well. Each mode is going to do something different. Typically when we're in that sport mode, it's going to hang onto the gears a little bit longer. So your RPMs are going to go up a little bit higher, giving you a little bit more of a sportier performance. Next one over is going to be our downhill brake control. So what that's going to do is it's going to hold us at a certain speed. So if you're doing technical off-road driving, things like that, vehicle will literally keep you at that speed and you only have to worry about working the steering wheel. We've also got, which is a kind of a neat one, we've got our all-wheel drive lock, which is kind of nice because the vehicle itself is equipped with either front wheel or all-wheel drive, depending on which trim level of the vehicle you're looking at. It is kind of nice that we've got that four-wheel, the all-wheel drive lock though. So really, really cool because if you're driving wintertime, sure, the vehicle's, uh, it's got an intelligent all-wheel drive, so it's automatically going to shoot out power as necessary, but we can permanently lock out that all-wheel drive as well, which I think is a great option. We've got a few cup holders and a little a few storage trays there as well. And one thing to note, uh, moving forward, we do have the option for wireless charging. Same thing, not standard in every trim level. It is available there though, if we wanted it. Moving down a bit more, we've got our armrest, little cubby there with a ton of storage space. As we start to move up overhead, we do have our mirror there, so manual dimming there. Up a little bit more, we do have our sunglasses holder, which is nice. It's going to be standard across the entire vehicle lineup. And then we also do have our cabin lighting. Now, I did mention this specific one doesn't have that sunroof, but it is available as an option if we wanted to go to a higher trim. Moving up overhead a bit more, we've got our visor, which does have a, with our vanity mirror, and it does have the light there as well. We can take this and we can also extend it out a tiny little bit more in order to block the sun that might be hitting our eyes. But really, really nice though when it comes down to it. Ah. All right, folks, now time for the fun part. Let's take this thing out for a test drive and see how it handles. Okay, all right. So foot's down, takes a little bit. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a, it's a good, it's a good choice of the vehicle, for a vehicle at the end of the day. Like if you're looking for something A to B, power wise is okay. Comfort wise, like I said, like I am still like, my mind is so blown at how comfortable this headrest is. <laughs> it's almost like you're putting your head back on a pillow. This is kind of nice. Drive quality though is great. Now, there are a few different options, like six different trim level choices in Canada, four different options down in the States. So you've got some different options if you prefer cloth seats, pleather seats, leather seats, et cetera. So you got some different choices there. But the overall ride quality is great. Like it's fairly quiet and comfortable inside of this cabin. It's just kind of nice. Huh. I am actually going to shift it out into the manual mode and I want to see what that's going to do to the actual driving experience. Is it going to be good? That's better. Yeah, that's better. Way better. Night and day better because you're in that regular drive mode and it's going to rev the, the vehicle fairly low. If you want to have a little bit of a sportier performance, I'm actually going to switch it out to the sport mode right now and see what the difference is between the sport versus that manual control. So I'm going to slow down a tiny bit and put my foot down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> huge difference. Huge. That is like a night and day difference. Wow. Yum. Okay, foot down. Yeah, you can tell immediately when we're in that sport mode, it is such a big difference. Foot down. Yeah, okay, that's where it is, okay. 
If you're looking for the sweet spot for your Sportage, you absolutely want to be in the sport mode as you're driving. It makes a huge, like a night and day difference. Those RPMs rev up much higher. Gear different gears are going to be different there as well. So it makes, like I said, it makes a huge, huge difference being in the sport mode versus the normal mode. So definitely something to think about. Down a gear, down another gear down another gear. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. I'm actually like surprisingly thoroughly impressed with the quality of this ride. Feels nice. It's nice and responsive. Now, one thing to note, this is all wheel drive. So when we're in Canada, with the exception of the LX base, LX base is going to be available front wheel drive. And then we've also got the all wheel drive option instead. All wheel drive is going to be the LX plus and then above. So if you go for just the base, it's going to be front wheel drive, but then you've got all wheel drive across the board. Down in the States, you've got the option for front or rear or all wheel drive, I should say, for the majority of the vehicle lineup. So if you prefer to save a couple bucks at the pump, you can definitely go front wheel drive. You're definitely going to get better fuel economy out of the front wheel than you will the all-wheel drive system. It's not a big difference, it's a bit of a difference. Well folks, that was an in-depth look at the 2022 Kia Sportage. What did you think? I like this thing, it's a nice option. And those lower trim levels, especially if you're just looking for a vehicle to get you from A to B, you don't care about some of the technology. There are those technology options though in the higher trim level, so you've got a lot of flexibility at a competitive price point. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your social networks, and until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe. Now, depending on which trim level the vehicle you're in, because if you're in the XS, SX, blah, 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 blah.